Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to make this kind of animation. This animation will be a little bit tricky because um, in the worst case, it may involve the loops, maybe more than just one loops. And I'm not so 100% sure how I'm going to approach that, the issue that we encounter, because this is a voice recording. Sometimes people ask what's the difference between noting and the tutorial. The noting is that I do not know in advance what to do. That's why there is no voice because I want to concentrate in problem solving and so on and so forth. Okay, anyway, so the voice recording is kind of in between noting and the tutorial so that I'm explaining what I'm trying to do, but I do not know if I will actually succeed or not. As always, I'm going to use the presets so you can download them for free from the link in the description. I'm going to use 3.1 only because for you to form, be more familiar with the new workflow. And maybe it will be helpful with the newest preset. So let's just start. So here we in Blender, let's just start uh, with a simple object and a geometry node modifier. And I need a torus. The way to like, create a torus is basically just a curve circle. And let's bevel curve. Okay, so now we have this bevel curve. Let's increase the radius, increase the resolution. So we have this torus. Because we're going to displace that later, so we actually need a lot of vertices. Let's just increase the resolution to a legitimate amount, or you can use the subdivision. Does not really matter, but I think this is okay. So once we have this, I need to create the second step is to create a kind of path for a ball to move on it. So I guess what I'm going to do is just, uh, let's take a, mm -hmm, let's take a, uh, let's replicate this curve circle and I need a point instead. So instance, the curve circle on curve circle, and this is what we're getting. Uh, I need to orientate them a little bit differently. So let's take an alignment on spline and plug the rotation to rotation. So now this is kind of regenerating the torus, but there is a reason for me to do this. Uh, let's decrease the resolution a little bit. Okay. And here I'm going to rotate. Uh, let's decrease the resolution to three. Okay. And I'm going to rotate all this kind of curve circle. So let's combine X, Y, Z and take a float range node. So this is the new float range node which is more powerful. You put the values inside. Uh, let's stop at 2. Uh, actually we're using degree. So it's 360 degree. And now this is what we're looking at. Uh, what I would like to do is to connect each individual points so that they form a spline, which turns to be the path for a sphere to move. So uh, let's do a helical connection. This helical connection has been a little bit uh, improved compared to the older one in 3.0, but uh, the process are basically the same. You uh, put instance into the sampling form and you put the instance into the branches amount. So now we have this structure. It's not a cyclic spline. You the better not to make them cyclic. Uh, what if I really take a set cyclic? Um, since there's no problem, but there is actually a little bit of gap between. I mean, it's kind of a um, glitch, whatever stuff, but anyway. Uh, I'm satisfied with this result, so I'm not going to uh, deal anything further. It's just the joint geometry. So now we have both paths and torus. And we can see this path is nicely setting on the torus. It depends on the settings because the radius and the radius. So uh, it will be better if you synchronize these two values. But uh, for the moment, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So now we have the path. I'm going to make a sphere to run on these paths. So let's take a follow spot. Take the loop output. I've explained this kind of follow spline concept, which is basically trimming the spline and the instance in them. 
Uh, anyway, in this particular case, I end up with an endpoint. Okay. Uh, let's point instance a UV sphere on this point. Okay. And the points instance. This is too large, so we're going to turn down the size of this UV sphere. Okay. So this is procedural. Uh, which means if you increase the resolution, you can increase the amount of balls that uh, finally appear on it. Okay. And then let's just ask this sphere to move with the parameter and it works pretty well. So if you turn on the loop to be one, the SE means start and the end. S means start, E means end, N means there's no loop. So if it's zero, then there is no loop. If it's one, then you loop at the start and then end. So you just run these values and you see no problems of looping. Okay. But I clamped these parameter values to five. Um, I think there is no issue because you're going to use the time info instead of really keyframe anything. So let's just uh, Take that to 1000 and you play this animation. It's very fast. Okay. The parameter runs from 0 to 1 for a cycle, which means this division factor, larger the division factor, longer time for it to actually reach from 0 to 1. So 125 frames to finish a full cycle. So this is the kind of conversion. So now if we stop, we almost finish one cycle and it's about 125 frames. So this is kind of idea. So now we have done this ball animation. I would like to do a little bit of depression on this sphere. There are probably lots of ways to deal with the depression. I can actually come up with two ways. There can be potentially more. And sometimes this is the difficult part to really think about uh, the methods you choose because you do not know which one is the best unless you try them. And obviously we don't have time to try all the methods. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to choose the curve parameter methods because I think it's the easiest. So uh, we are outputting the curves from this uh, loop output. Okay. And I'm going to transfer attribute to transfer its curve parameter out. So let's uh, take a spline parameter. Uh, in 3.0, this is called a curve parameter. In 3.1, this is called a spline parameter. Uh, this actually makes more sense compared to the curve parameter because curve works for the entire whole thing, but the spline works for each individual spline. So this name works better, but uh, Sometimes I still don't get used to with this new name, even if it makes more sense. And I'm going to choose the nearest, okay. because I do not have a face in the target. Actually, this is also renamed to the source, because in 3.0 it's named as target. But by functionality, there is no difference. I do not really like the name changes, but, well, it makes sense. So, uh, in this transfer attribute, what should I do? Uh, I need to do the depression, which means I'm trying to displace the original torus, which is the bevel curve we created. And I think the best way to displace that is to use the normal displacement. So by increasing or decreasing these displacements, you can actually see. Okay. And then I'm going to transfer this curve from the attribute now it gives a warning that it says the target geometry must contain a mesh or a point cloud. Okay, the target actually means the source. They changed the name here, but they didn't change the name of warning. Anyway, so we have to do the curve to mesh to convert that to mesh. I think in the future it will be done automatically, so we do not need to worry in the future, but I think this is what we're having. However, we still do not have any kind of displacement. The reason is that uh, 
when the curve is being converted to mesh, there is no spawn parameter anymore because this is a mesh. So we need to capture attribute. We capture the spawn parameter and then transfer it. Okay. So now we have a kind of nice displacement. It's just kind of looks very horrible because the start to the end is zero to one. Uh, we are going to decrease the magnitude. So we take a map range to decrease the magnitude. So this is the first step. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to reverse the relationship a little bit. Another thing is I do not want to, this kind of depression goes through the whole lens. I try to minimize that. So let's use a color ramp and try to crush that. And now we have this result. Okay, uh, looks kind of ugly, but you get a kind of idea. When we transfer this attribute, you always need to realize an issue that it transferred the attribute to the nearest, but uh, we only have this mu much targets, uh, which means what about the regions in between, which is far to either side. They will also inherit an attribute from whichever one, which the computer thinks the closest. Okay. But I do not want the attribute to be inherited on this kind of blank region. So we need to have some mechanism to limit this transfer. Uh, so in this case, we actually need uh, jump to proximity. Okay. And instead of using the direct uh, jump to proximity, I'm going to take the proximity four. And I'm going to turn on this object, uh, the mesh by turn I, by unticking this box. So I need a, a mesh for evaluation. And let's take a mass to multiply the fourth. And I'm going to increase the scale. This is scale offset that determines the distance finally you transfer these attributes. Okay. So by increasing a little bit of value, you can see the depression is more concentrated to this spawn area instead of affecting all this kind of blank region in between. Okay. So we're trying to limit the, the effect of the transfer attribute. Otherwise, it will just affect everything. Okay. So this is good. The only issue is probably a little bit um, uh, how should I say, the gap in between the depression and the, our sphere. This is easy to solve. You just uh, do a little bit of simple math that add a math node. And we're going to take a module, module at one. Actually, we can use a fraction. Fraction is basically module at one. And we're trying to do a little bit of offset. And now we have finished. Uh, and you realize by animating this value, then we are flowing, uh, we are making the this kind of depression to move. This is very important because this is how we are going to animate it exactly. Okay, so let's add another add mass. Okay, so here I want you to understand the parameters to animate it. So previously we know that by uh, Decreasing this value, it's going forwards. Okay. However, for the, our parameters, we increasing this value. So let's use a hmm. let's use the group input instead. Okay. By increasing this group input, then we are increasing the parameter, and then the sphere move forwards. But uh, the upper part is completely the opposite. We need to decrease the value for it to move forwards. So in this case, you just uh, do a very simple negative. So one is using a negative value. The other is using a positive value. So now if we are increasing these values, then you can see the movement nicely. Uh, I think this offset is no longer needed. Okay. 
and then it moves like this. Kind of very interesting. Okay. Uh, it's kind of very interesting that they start with the same magnitude and then they have a kind of a difference and then they goes back to the same location again. Uh, kind of interesting in my opinion. <laughs> Technically speaking, you can do a lot of more polishing. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. Uh, basically, it's possible that you add some displacement. Knowing that the entire path or depression are all based on this helical curve that we are generating, and it's completely procedural, you can add or decrease the amount of object without any problem. Okay. Uh, in this case, what we can also do is trying to add some displacement. So let's just set position. Uh, we definitely need to realize the instance so that we can affect each individual spline differently. This is just a kind of thought. It's not necessarily a thing that you need to do. And by we let's decrease the scale a little bit. Let's increase in the frequency. So we get a little bit rigid the path, but they are not adhering to the surface anymore. Uh, in this case, what you can also do is you either recast or use the geometry proximity to make the points wrap to the surface. Uh, it's just a, a kind of a thinking process. So we need this bevel curve as the target to, for the wrap. And then let's set the position. So now it's completely tightly adhered to the position with the noise. So let's decrease the frequency, increase the scale. It, this is just a kind of um, a thought. You do not necessarily follow this. But there are lots of ways to do. This is what I would like to say. And you just play around with this kind of value. Uh, maybe we made the path a little bit too jaggy, but it also depends on the resolution that you finally get on these torus or whatever stuff. Recast may be also a good solution. Finally, these are all your responsibility. So I do not want to deal with too much of that. Okay. You can also add a noise on this kind of depression. Also to know that this uh, color ramp is essentially affecting the depression, the memory. Okay. What if you would like to make a uh, more severe? Then you basically have to run a loop. So you, it's probably better if you just uh, make this into a node group and uh, add another one with a little bit of offset on this group input. It's just a kind of ideology. So there are lots of ways to do that. And I think I will just stop here. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.